Hello, I'm going to walk you through the slides for Chapter 1, the PowerPoint presentation. But since it's 41 slides long, I'll probably break it up into two or three different videos. So we'll start with the first one here, and that's Chapter 1 in your book. As I walk through these slides, I want you to be aware that I'm not going to just read off everything on a slide. I'll probably kind of talk around the issue while you read the slide. Also, you have your book. To reference and these go right along with the book chapters which is another reason I'm not just going to read off the slides so read your book before watching the videos hopefully that will give you some background and explanation as if I were in the classroom with you first off we want to talk about an understanding of what the objectives are and understanding how business research is done and what are the trends affecting business research? How can we identify good research? What makes good research? And then what is the process? We're going to be looking at the process for the entire semester, but this is kind of an overview here. First off here, why is research more important now than ever? It's because things in, in society and things in business are changing so rapidly now. We have uh, new technology, new innovations that come along every few months and just overturn things as we know it. So if you think about it and look back just a few years ago and the way we were getting our movies, we were going to the uh, video rental stores and renting the movies and taking them home and then Netflix came along and sending them in the mail and now they're doing it online and movies on demand. And so business changes very quickly. And every time there's a change like that, we have to do some research to figure out what to do to be successful in business. This is just a little research trivia they throw out here just to kind of show you uh, what research can tell you. Um, ideas for using this research generated statistics, some things you could do with finding out information through research here. 34% of employees never consider their bosses, clients, or colleagues think before posting to a blog or social network. So that is pause for thought, isn't it? Business research plays an important role in an environment that emphasizes measurement. Return on investment is the calculation of the financial return for all business expenditures, and it's emphasized more now than ever. Business research expenditures are increasingly scrutinized for their contribution to return on investment. So as the business environment changes, as the market changes, research should help companies identify where they need to be going in the future. Business research then is defined as a systematic inquiry that provides information to guide business decisions. The text definition is provided in the slide here. Can you think of any examples of types of decision-making situations that could be addressed by using business research? Perhaps if you own a fast food restaurant and you know that trends and eating habits are changing as people are, are trying to be healthier and eat healthier, you may have to look at your menu and decide what items you need to drop from the menu and what new items you should add in order to keep your customers happy. So, research is one way to find out. This helps companies reduce risk. Risk is based on uncertainty. It's based on not knowing, and if you don't know, you can't make the right decisions. You can identify financial and economic risk, but there are other kinds of risks. There are social risks for companies. They have to con be concerned about preserving their reputation. There's physical risk. If it's safety or if there are product recalls, there's environmental risk. There's technological risk if you fall behind or if you get too far ahead of the competition and too far ahead of the market. Several factors increase the relevance for studying business research. Information overload, 
Well, we have the internet, we have search engines, we have extensive amounts of information. The quality and credibility must be continuously evaluated. You, the ubiquitous access to information has brought about the development of knowledge communities and the need for organizations to leverage this knowledge for innovation. Otherwise, you just merely drown in the data. Stakeholders now have more information at their disposal and are more resistant to business stimuli. We have technological connectivity. Individuals, public sector organizations, and businesses are adapting to changes in work patterns, changes in the formation of relationships and communities, and the realization that geography is no longer a primary constraint. Shifting global economics. The shifting global centers of economic activity and composition. Some of this is caused by the rising economic power of Asia and the demographic shifts within our own regions. This highlights the need for organizations to expand their knowledge of customers, their knowledge of suppliers, of talent pool, of business models, and the infrastructures with which they may be less familiar. Increasingly critical scrutiny of big business. The availability of information has made it possible for all of a firm's stakeholders to demand inclusion in company decision making, while at the same time elevating the level of societal suspicion. Just take um, News Corporation, for example, and the scrutiny that Rupert Murdoch has been facing in the UK lately over some of the business practices going on with some of the divisions of his company. More government intervention. As public sector activities increase in order to provide some minimal or enhanced level of social services, governments are becoming increasingly aggressive in protecting their constituencies by imposing restrictions on the use of managerial and business research tools. So you can't just invade somebody's privacy to do research. The battle for analytical talent. Managers face progressively complex decisions, applying mathematical models to extract meaningful knowledge from volumes of data and using highly sophisticated software to run their organizations. The shift to knowledge intensive industries puts greater demand on a scarcity of well-trained talent with advanced analytical skills. Computing power and speed, lower cost data collection, better visualization tools, more computational power, more and faster integration of data, and real-time access to knowledge are now managers' expectations. New perspectives on established research methodologies. Older tools and methodologies, once limited to exploratory research, are gaining wider acceptance in dealing with a wider range of managerial problems. talk about computing power and speed. Because of computers now, we can collect data for a fraction of the cost of 10 or 20 years ago. If you wanted to do a survey 20 years ago, you probably had to mail out surveys to a number of households. The response rate would be maybe 2 or 3 percent. You had to pay the postage both ways. You may have had to pay an incentive to people to get them to sit down, fill out the survey, put it in an envelope, take it out to the mailbox. Now you can do the same thing by sending someone an email with a link and having them click on the link, go to SurveyMonkey or some other uh, service and fill out a survey for you. We have better visualization tools so that we can see, we can construct graphs, charts, maps, conceptual mapping, all kinds of stuff so that we can graph concepts and look at trends and get a better understanding. We also have more powerful computation now. We can process reams and reams of data. We can do data mining and find out a lot of information that may help make business decisions. We also have real-time access. As people are purchasing things, we can get that data and information immediately. We have integration of data. So we get data from someone's activities online and we pair that with what we know about the person, other places they've been online. 
we can compare all that stuff and start to build a profile of this particular customer. Now I'm going to have more of a marketing slant to this because my expertise is in the area of marketing research. So business planning drives business research too. It's a management issue also. The mission drives its business goals, strategies, and tactics, and consequently, its need for business decision support systems and business intelligence. Students need to understand the differences in these concepts to fully understand what drives a manager to seek solutions through research. Selecting a business strategies and tactics often drive the research. A business strategy is defined as a general approach an organization will follow to achieve its business goals. A strategy might describe how an organization can best position itself to fulfill customer needs or establish a general approach to gaining brand equity. haagen positioned itself with its super premium ice cream strategy. Business tactics are specific timed activities that execute a business strategy. So we have the tactics that execute the strategy. haagen designed its ice cream to be rich and creamy with flavors like peanut butter fudge chunk. It packaged the ice cream in pint-sized containers with signature gold and burgundy colors. It distributes the ice cream in grocery stores and franchise stores. When elements of data are organized for retrieval, they collectively constitute a business decision support system. This data is often shared over an intranet or extranet. An intranet is a private network that is contained within the enterprise and is not available to the public at large. It may consist of many interlinked local area networks. It typically includes connections through one or more computers to the internet. The main purpose of an intranet is to share company information and computing resources among internal audiences. An extranet is a private network that uses internet protocols and the public telecommunication system to share an organization's information, data, or operations with external suppliers, vendors, or customers. An extranet can be viewed as the external portion of a company's intranet. A business intelligence system, or BIS, is designed to provide ongoing information about events and trends in the technological, economic, political, and legal demographic, cultural, social, and competitive areas. Now, please move on to the next video.